Let's go back in time to 1940. Disney releases Fantasia, a film that a lot of people love due to its uniqueness of combining animation with classical music, which, of course, was executed in an excellent way. The film was actually meant to be a concert film, meaning that was going to be redone over and over again, with remaining shorts as well as new ones based on other classical pieces, but the film didn't do that well. I mean, it did well, but it cost a lot to make, so it didn't make enough money to have the sequels that Walt Disney intended to have. 60 years later, it finally came out. Fantasia 2000. And yes, that is a pretty dated title, isn't it? For some reason, everyone was assessing everything 2000, 2000. Because the, the people from the night, late 90s were like, Oh my god, it's gonna be 2000, that's like the future! So yeah, the year I was born is now considered the future. Well, it's not anymore, it's the past. We're 2024 now. 2000 is no longer the future. They're actually going to call it originally Fantasia Continued, which is a really stupid name as well. Then Fantasia 1999, that would be even worse. At least 2000 has a number 2 in the title, and it rings rolls with the bell better than 1999. The main driving force behind this film was Roy E. Disney. If you don't know who this guy is, well, his last name should give it away. He was the nephew of Walt Disney, and the son of Roy Disney, who was the co-founder of the Disney Studio, in case you're wondering. He handled mostly financial stuff and was the second CEO after Walt Disney passed away. So yeah, he has a very interesting legacy behind him. Now, he was more creative decision. He made a lot of great creative decisions. He was very much into Walt, his uncle's visions of how animation should be made as an art form. And he liked the idea of Fantasia a lot and really wanted to redo it. And of course, we're like, hey, you might as well we'll do it again. And he was, he was a big... In part of what the song choices were made and he even kicked michael eisner out of the studio he's like get this guy out of here and people voted and like yeah let's get him out oh that's hilarious anyway so yeah this is made most mostly his idea everyone else thought it was a good idea too so that's why they did it and it turned out to be pretty good in my opinion in a way i actually like this better than the original fantasia but that's just my personal preference i thought the shorts were more entertaining and more interesting especially in contrast with each other and they are better paced Pretty much all these shorts have a narrative, which I actually usually always prefer over just, well, here's just some leaves falling, which is nice, but seeing, like, leaves falling for, like, 20 minutes just gets boring after a while. Sorry, Original Fantasia, you are great, but I'm not the biggest fan of Original Fantasia. Not that Fantasia 2000 is perfect or anything. In fact, I can see why some people would not like it as much as Original Fantasia. But you like Fantasia, and then Fantasia 2000, it gives you more of what you want. By the end of Fantasia 2000, it's like, oh, man, there's no more shorts, which is the exact opposite feeling I had at the end of Fantasia Original. I know that might be a controversial opinion, but at the same time, I don't really care. These are my opinions, and I'm going to say what I feel about these films. That's the whole point of review, isn't it? So if you like my opinion, good for you. If you don't like it, well, I don't really care. So I might as well talk about each short and why I like each one of them. Or maybe I don't like them. We'll see. The intro is pretty great. Showcasing some of the previous shorts from the past Fantasia, and this kind of collage as the uh, stage starts to build up playing tribute to what a lot of people consider to be a masterpiece of animation. Which, for animation-wise, it is true. Like I said, I have problems with Fantasia, but when it comes to the animation, it is a masterpiece. The first short that doesn't even have an introduction is kind of these paper butterflies flying around. Did I say butterflies? I meant to say butterflies. That happens when you talk way too fast. It's short, but it's gripping and dramatic, and it's very reminiscent of the original Fantasia in its style. One of the things that Fantasia 2000 has compared to the original is that they have celebrity guest appearances, which feels a little dated, to be honest. Like, sometimes they'll throw in jokes, and the jokes will fall flat. Thank you. All right, boys, let's hold. Oh, sorry. Go I don't mind the content of a celebrity is talking about it. It's nice to see people respecting animation and classical music as an art form. And some of them do a pretty good job. Of course, the James Earl Jones spot is pretty great because he a, has a great voice. Just not in the Lion King remake because the Lion King remake sucked ass. So yeah, there is some crappy celebrity cameos that aren't that great. But oh well, it doesn't hurt the film that much at all because they're incredibly short. They're snappy and they get to the shorts right away. So it's not really a big problem. The next animated short is one about a bunch of whales flying in the sky. They're blue whales, but they fly. They fly now! This short is notable, like another short as well in the film, for using pretty much entirely CGI, which at this point Disney's been using, but not for like entire segments like this, where the main characters are CGI and most of the elements used are computer graphics. While well, I like this short, it's a little bit slow and doesn't do a whole lot for me. It's just blue whales flying, and that's pretty much it. And the CG elements don't look that great. I mean, they're okay, but they don't age as well as the other animated shorts in this film. The next short's one of my personal favorites, and it wasn't even intended to be in this film. This was a side short that a famous animator was working on, and like, hey, let's put it in uh, this film. I'm like, okay, sure. 
This is just basically a couple characters in New York City not happy with their life and all do a random life swap kind of thing going on. Well, the characters don't purposely choose the life swap, but near the end they change stuff around. It's hard to explain, but you gotta watch it for yourself. It's like 1920s jazz inspired with the design and the music, and it's very unique and I like it. I prefer more narrative stories in my Fantasia shorts, so this is why I like this one better than some of the other ones. We'll go into the history of this short because this was actually something they planned to make in the original Fantasia, obviously not with CGI. The next one is the Tin Soldier adaptation, which is a Hans Christian Andersen story. I'm not going to go the history of that one, by the way. The CGI versions of the characters, which are obviously inspired by Toy Story, had toys coming to life on CGI. I mean, come on. But the designs are based off old sketches from the original Fantasia of what the original Tin Soldier short would have looked like, which they scrapped because they didn't have enough time to finish it. But this one's not even entirely CGI, because later on we get to see some 2D elements like these rats and fish and a couple of people and painted backgrounds. So it's kind of weird, actually. Like, this shot here doesn't look like it's even from the same exact short from that Tin Soldier stuff, but it actually is, which is kind of weird. But yeah, it's about a little guy fighting a giant puppet guy who's evil, and that's pretty much it. There's not much else to it, but it, it, it's fine. It's fine. It's not. Then there's a Flamingo of Yo-Yo's in that short, which is... Okay, I don't really get it. It lasts like 10 seconds, but it's weird. It has good animation, but the concept is just bizarre. The next short's the only one that's reused from Ritual Fantasia, which is obviously The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I talked about this in the Ritual Fantasia review, so I got not much to say about it here. Well, I guess you could say it's kind of weird for them to reuse a short, but they're actually planning to reuse multiple ones, which would have been kind of bad, actually, because you want original film. I know the original idea was to keep reusing the old shorts, but at the same time, you want people coming to movies to see new shit, not old shit unless you're purposely going to watch an old movie. Though I do like this transition where they play an old clip of Mickey with a composer who's dead now, and both and Mickey's voice actor is obviously dead because it's Walt Disney. And then transitions to a modern day aesthetic here where the, the, that Mickey actually is running over to the new guy here, which is kind of funny. But it is a little jarring to hear Walt Disney Mickey go from to Wayne Allwine Mickey. Of course, I would notice that because I like voice actor stuff. I like both those voice actors. Just keep that in mind. Of course, I like Walt Disney. I like Disney shit. What do you, what'd you expect? The next story is, is Noah's Ark. Yeah, Noah's Ark. It's a comedic take on the classic fairy tale. It, fairy, I emphasize fairy tale, it's not real. With Donald Duck. Makes sense. And the music is graduation music. I know they explained this in the original m the movie that they're like, oh, well, it wasn't made to be like that way, but everyone knows it's graduation music. The short's actually about Donald and Daisy, who are love each other, but do they get separated for a while on the arc. And they think them they had they died. Both of them think the other one has died, and that's pretty much it. It is kind of a weird short, but it's actually very well animated and it's funny. So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, even though it is incredibly weird. And look at that! Don gets a happy ending. That doesn't happen very often in these Disney films. The last one is one that a lot of people say is their favorite, but it's one that I find just kind of weird. It's about this weird girl spirit thing, and then it touches this one thing and destroys everything, and then she cries, but then she makes everything grow back, so I don't know why she was so sad. This is supposed to be our Night on Bald Mountain and Avi Maria of this film, and it's animated beautifully, but I don't really understand it that much. Like, why is she crying if she can create everything again easily? Does she not know that? But she was doing that at the beginning of the short, so I don't get it. And that was Fantasia 2000. Ultimately, it wasn't really necessary to make it, but it was nice they decided to make a film that was entirely artistic and going back to their classic roots. It didn't do very well for them, but I'm glad it's a film that exists. I recommend anyone giving it a watch, even if you didn't like Fantasia. You might like Fantasia 2000 better. I'm not exactly sure who would that be, but hey, give it a shot. So here is where the film is ranking currently. It is in the C tier. Along with the original Fantasia, though it ranked a little bit higher. I uh, explain why I like it, though it's still a film that I like, but I probably won't think about it too much. I'm more into full-on narratives, and I do like the artistic expression of these films. They're just not my cup of tea, per se. They're fun to watch, but I rather watch shorts as shorts, rather than a full package. I'm not sure that makes any sense, but that's just how I am. I like them, but I don't love them. The only thing else to rank in this film is the villains. There's not really much villains really but there's three and they're all in the deeds here because they're kind of just there didn't really do a whole lot for me a firebird it, it burns stuff down to it's born i guess and that's about it black triangles they're, they're there and the jack and box guy he's just a simp they're not you I mean i don't know what you want me to say of these guys don't have a lot of development here they're just there they'll do a whole lot 
they're okay. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Next time Disney goes full CGI in the very strange dinosaur. I'll see you then.